last last night there was a report a report that came out about the Wisconsin Badgers and a secret audio tape was leaked with the seniors criticizing their head basketball coach. So first of all, this touches home to me. This was a very disturbing and really upsetting report that I heard because I went to Wisconsin. Because I went to Wisconsin and Obviously, Wisconsin underachieved last year. This was a team that was ranked number seven in the preseason. They finished 18 and 13. They lost in the second round of the NCAA tournament to Baylor and the Bears, who, ironically enough, Wisconsin probably gave them their most challenging fight of the entire tournament, you could argue. And so it's understandable that after a disappointing season, frustrations are going to percolate and boil over. That's 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 natural. But this was a senior-laden team that had high expectations, and they came up short. But this is what I'll say. I've never played sports at a collegiate level. That's true. But I have played for major Division I high school teams. I've played with coaches that have berated me after practice, played with different guys who get into you. And I understand the inner workings of locker rooms, what conversations go on between those lines in practice and closed doors in the locker room after practice. I understand how this works. And most of the time, like the old adage, what stays, what what goes on in Vegas stays in Vegas. That, that typically applies here when it comes to sports. Now I'm not mentioning this to overshadow what the players were feeling or how they were treated by perhaps them breaking this unspoken rule. This isn't meant to overshadow them. Because on the one hand, I think that this is a rare instance in which two things can be true. I think that on the one hand, clearly there was disconnect between the players and the coaches. And the players have a right to air their grievances. And I I am glad that I saw, or at least listened, to the coaches crying throughout the entire audio because it showed me that they showed some empathy. They actually care. They weren't just stoic. They weren't just dismissing easily what the players had to say. And the players should have a right to be heard. I'm advocating for players to communicate. My mom's a therapist. Communication is everything. Communication is everything to a healthy relationship. That's what I've been taught. It's the best way to deal with these types of communi- with these types of issues is to communicate how you're feeling. And so I have no pl- I have no issues with the players wanting to confront the coaches and reveal the gripes that they've been having throughout the season. They are entitled to do that. I'm happy that they're empowered and they feel empowered to do that. But at the same time, like I said, two things can be true. And whoever did record that audio and whoever had the gumption to leak it to the Wisconsin State Journal really should be ashamed of themselves because this isn't something that should be disclosed to the public. Again, it's not just about yourself. It's what's the lasting ramifications and impact on the recruiting class, on the next series of guys that are going to be playing. And I think that they didn't think that completely through is, okay, maybe you, and it's a shame. It's truly a shame that perhaps Coach Guard and his coaching practices were having a deleterious effect on your pro on your basketball career and for a lot of these guys college basketball is where the road ends they're not going to be playing professionally so the experiences that they're able to forge in college should theoretically last them a lifetime so it's a shame that perhaps those experiences were kind of marred by a coach's practices. But again, it's not the fact that you exposed maybe who the coach really is or his practices. And obviously, Coach Guard needs to look at himself in the mirror and his coaching staff and adjust. But that isn't the issue because, again, I'm all for players confronting coaches speaking their minds. I got no issue with that. They should be encouraged to do that. But at the same time, it shouldn't give you free license to just in a deceitful manner, record a guy and then leak it to the public. So that that's my, that's my problem with it is again, 
It obviously impacts directly my university that I feel so passionate about. And let me just add that I broadcast a ton of games for the Wisconsin student radio station, 91.7 FM Madison. I've interviewed Coach Guard. I've been in the locker room with him. I've listened to his post-game conferences. I've spoken to the guy. He's genuinely a good guy. Now, granted, I haven't been in the locker room with him and the players. So how he communicates and verbalizes messages to players, that's true. I haven't been there. But from our interactions, he's always been a good guy. So I think that, again, and, and the players alluded to this, if you unpeel the whole interview is, or, or the, all, all the audio clips, is that it's not coming from a place of animosity. It's coming from a place of love. But if it's coming from a place of love, you have to deal with that. There has to be players and coaches have to adhere to some level of confidentiality and privacy. And I'm going to leave it at that. We saw the, the Steelers with Antonio Brown recording Mike Tomlin without him knowing after a post game interview, a post game uh, in the locker room. Fortunately, it was only positive messages. What if he said something negative? So that's what I would uh, 